Last night at the Big A, Jared Weaver pitched to Jim and shutting out the Astros to finally pick up his first win of the season. Tonight, it's Matt Shoemaker's turn to take the hill as the Halos look to gain another game against first place Houston. Astros and Angels next. There's no question it was nice to see Jared Weaver's performance last night. More importantly, not only for him to get over that hump, but also for the Angels to knock this series up in a game of peace. Tonight, it is game number three of a four-game set. Hi, everybody. From inside the Big A, we welcome you back to Angels Baseball here on Fox Sports West along with Mark Gubiza. I'm Victor Rojas. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, we focused quite a bit on Mike Trout because he and Cole Calhoun pretty much have been the only offensive threat for the Angels. But now Albert Pujols starting to get hot. 11-game hitting streak for him. Victor, Albert is being Albert right now, starting to square up the baseball, hitting into all fields, and take a look at our AT&T U-verse rewind. You're going to see why Albert has a 11-game hit streak going. Now, when you try to go inside part of the plate, he still can get his hands inside the baseball and go the other way. He can drive the ball, except well. We know what he's done throughout his career against Houston, but he also is showing that power, that lower leverage he has using the lower part of his body. He is healthy. A little bit of a hamstring issue on the on the road trip, but still squaring up so well. That mentioned 11 game history hit 357 doing that. He once had a 30 game history back in 2003 as a member of the Cardinals. So it's damn usual all time records for the Cardinals. But I think he just looks relaxed at the plate right now. When he gets in that pull mode, put a lot of ground balls to shortstop using the whole field. That will force Keuchel to maybe throw an inside pitch, and that's when he can drive it out. He's got good numbers against Keuchel. 313 career hitter against him. Look from the drive the ball well today, especially the other way. Yeah, that 11-game hitting streak, second longest as an angel. And as far as the pitching matchup is concerned, don't blink tonight. Dallas Keuchel and Matt Shoemaker both very quick on the mound. As we're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A, sit back and relax. We're going to bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we return.
the game of the standings against the Houston Astros with their victory last night. Now five games back of the Strohs and uh, what could have been had the Angels hung on two nights ago in the opening game of the series. But uh, you can't worry about that stuff. You can only worry about today's ball game. We just turned the page. Oh. That's all it was. Little Bob Seeger. And Metallica doing that. Yeah, Bob so Seeger's long. birthday the other day. Yes, it was. I think it was. Matt Shoemaker's taking the bounce, so he's ready to go. Let's check out AJ Hitch's starting lineup for the Houston Astros. They sit atop the Western Division with a 19 and 11 record. Mixing it up a little bit tonight. Jake Marisnik will lead things off at center. Jose Altuve will bat second. Luis Valbuena at third. Evan Gaddis at DH. Colby Rasmussen right. Chris Carter first. Hank Conger, the former Angel, gets to start behind the plate tonight. Preston Tucker in left, and it's Marwin Gonzalez, the shortstop, and he will bat ninth. Taking on Matt Shoemaker. Rolls into this one with a two and two record and a 5.40 earned run average. Yeah, he started that last game out. He had great command. Good velocity on his fastball, too. Two and two marks so far of the season. But when you look at what pitches he throws and what he's most successful with, his fastball was very good last game. Spotted well. 60% of his pitches fastball moves it in and out. Split finger, that's his go-to swing and miss pitch. His slider and curve, both those pitches he gets back in the counts. Then he can get a swing and miss with his slider against a right-handed batter, his curve against a lefty. Defensively for the Angels tonight behind Shoemaker. He will uh, stack up like this. Colin Calgill in left, Mike Trout at center. Cole Calhoun in right, Taylor Featherston at third, Eric Ibar short, Johnny Givatello at second, Albert Pujols at first, Carlos Perez behind the plate. Featherston getting the start at third base. We've seen him make some solid plays to at the infield, but Pretty good his first start out of third base. Good range, very good throwing arm himself. Turned real two really good double plays his first start at third base. Shoemaker, you mentioned a very good start the last time out. Ten strikeouts, matching a career high for him. Took the loss. That was the game in which there were five solo home runs hit. The Angels lost three to two. Jake Marisnik leading things off for the first time this year for the Houston Astros. And he will look at the strike. He did bat in that leadoff spot seven times last year. Hitting 325 with three home runs, 13 runs batted in. A lot of speed at the top of the order for the Astros. 20 stolen bases between the two of them. Marisnik went 0 for 3 in last night's game. Houston and the Angels both managing six hits. Gorgeous night. The sun is out, at least uh, on the outfield. Came out during batting practice, 64 degrees at first pitch. It's just good to see the sun. It's no doubt. cloudy and cool. Two on pitch. Marisnik fouls it off to the right. It's two balls and two strikes. Halos with their win last night. Now seven and eight here at home. Find themselves two games under 500 overall at 14 and 16. Still just trying to find their groove on the offensive side of things. 2 2 now. This is punching the right field, a base hit. Marizic, good piece of hitting with two strikes, and he's going to try to stretch it into a double. He falls down. I'm not so sure he even got the base. So um, he's having fun with it. But if he doesn't stumble around the bag, he's at uh, second base. And quickly running back to the base. Hey, Conger just busting on the uh, on the bench there. Oh, we remember his butt when he's wearing that angel uniform going down the line. That was one all of the best. timer. <laughs> so it's a leadoff single for Marizda. And it'll bring up Jose Altuve. Potential break there by him falling. Definitely was going to be in position to. Get in there and slide in for a double. Well, Dubé, three hit game last night, going three for four, three singles. Last night is 14th multi hit game. Marisnik off to a big lead. First pitch is a strike to throw down to second, is a good one. And they got him. Carlos Perez gunning down Marisnik. That's the proper word. What a gun he has. The quick transfer and throw. What a throw. A good pitch to throw, too. A high pitch, quick on the release, and perfect throw to second base. And Giovatello able to apply the tag. Marisnik out by quite a bit. Second straight night that he's gunned down a would be base stealer in the first inning. But that was huge last night. It for was. Him. When you think about Altuve on first trying to steal against Weaver, you throw him out. 
And we didn't see much movement uh, beyond that from Altuve the rest of the night. Weaver picked him off as well. 1-1. One, one. Altuve skies one on the first base side. This one drifting toward the seats and out of play. So it's one and two now. That's a huge element to have. If you have a catcher that can throw out even the very best of base dealers, all of a sudden your opponent is more apt to go base to base instead of being overly aggressive. Remember watching Pudge Rodriguez over the years playing against him when he was with Texas. Our scouting reports were you just sit there, just go, hey, we got to go extra base hit. We're going base to base. We cannot get a good enough jump to be able to steal against him. He was that good for a long period of time. One, two, pitch, and Altuve gets into one to deep left field. Calgill racing back there. That is gone. Jose Altuve hits his fourth of the season, and Houston strikes first. They lead it one nothing. Where the home run ball continues to haunt Matt so far this year. That's the eighth home run he has allowed. Trying to go high fastball. The ball ran out over the plate. Again, anything high against Altuve is breaking his zone. I mentioned, him, you know, the similar type of swing that Kirby Puckett had. He loved the high fastball. You couldn't throw it high enough without him squaring it up. Valbuena trying to bunt his way on. Rolls it foul. Eight home runs now allowed by Shoemaker matching Weavers for the uh, team lead. This is an Astros team that uh, leads the American League at home runs. Now they're 43rd of the season. Well, two days a 345 career hitter against the Angels come into this game. I'll go up now with that home run. Valbuena lifts one out toward right center field. Not very deep. Two outs. Bring up Evan Gaddis. It's the fourth game that uh, Shoemaker has pitched against Houston. Just the second start, though. 1 0 record. 5.79 ERA. Total of nine in the third innings. 11 hits, six runs. Gaddis at DH, swings first pitch and fouls it back. 190 average for Gaddis. Six home runs, 18 RBIs acquired in the offseason from the Atlanta Braves. Oh, a two. Good fastball there at 92. Oh, two. Swing and a miss. Perez will throw down to first to complete the strikeout. And there it is. But the Astros strike first. Altuve with a solo home run. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Houston up one nothing.
home run of the season. And check out the Angels offense for tonight's ball game. Cole Calhoun and right field. Mike Trout at center. Albert Pujols at first base. David Freeze will DH tonight. He's the cleanup hitter. Eric Ibard short. Johnny Giovatello at second. Carlos Perez behind the plate. Taylor Featherston at third base. And Colin Calgill batting ninth, playing left. Taking on the 27 year old left hander native of Tulsa, Oklahoma. His name is Dallas Keuchel. What an outstanding ERA. 0 0.80 for Keuchel this season so far. Go twos against him to be successful though. Middle of the field approach and connecting the lineup. Bunch of those hits together throughout. One through nine. Cole lines one out to center field. It's a leadoff single for the Angels. Defensively for the Strohs tonight. Tucker, Marisnik, Rasmus in the outfield from left to right. Valbuena, Gonzalez, Altuve, and Carter around the infield from third to first. And our old friend, Hank Tiger, behind the plate. And Rasmus out in right field. He's played center field. He's played some left field. This is his fourth start in right field. His 10 in his career. He covers a lot of ground. Pretty good throwing arm. No assists so far this year. And has committed one error in the outfield. It'll be difficult out there in that sun initially in, at the six o'clock start here. Trout lays off the first pitch ahead of the count of one ball, no strikes, hitting two nine. Eight home runs, 18 RBIs, went over three last night, was also hit by a pitch by Roberto Hernandez in his last plate appearance. This is pulled toward the hole. It's going to be a tough play, and uh, Marlon Gonzalez bobbles it. I don't think they would have gotten Cole Calhoun at second either. No, he jammed Trout, and Trout's going to beat that one out. The only play they would have had maybe was at second base, but I think Cole got a good jump. It was going to beat that out. He's playing more up the middle. He's going in that hole, just trying to be able to get himself in position to make a quick throw to second base, but cannot feel that ball cleanly. It's an infield single for Trout. And Keuchel doesn't overwhelm you with velocity on his fastball. He spots it so well. He's 87-92 slider, cut fastball, changeup, occasional curveball. Albert pops it up. First pitch right in the infield. Slams the bat down. Infield fly rule is called one out. Do you see Albert jumping on the first pitch? The he was going to try to jump on that little cutter out in front. Got jammed on it. So first and second, one out now. David Freeze at the plate. Well, the right guy for the Angels to have up here against Keuchel. Very good career numbers. Uses the whole field exceptionally well against him. Eight for 14 in his career versus Keuchel. First pitch fastball downstairs. Breeze hitting 225, five home runs, 19 runs batted in. Pulled a couple of singles to left field last night, ended up going two for three, and also scored a run. Back to back singles for Calhoun and Trout. What a what? Halos last night, one for six with men in scoring position. The series, three for 10. He will both throw his slider and his cut fastball in against right-handed batters. Hyundai key for this game to be successful against Keuchel. A little 38 special. Hold on loosely. Don't overswing this relaxed swing. Relaxed hands at the plate. Use the entire field against a very good pitcher in Dallas Keuchel. 3-0 on the season and a 0 0.80 earned run average. Here's the 1-2. Just did Two balls, two strikes. That uh, 0 0.80, of course, leads the league. Mark League Pitcher of the Month. 3-0 with a 0 0.73 for the month of April. Second time he's faced the Angels this year. Freeze fouls it back. Pitched 45 innings so far this season. He's not allowed a home run. Yeah. He is a ground ball machine. And on the uh, 18th of April, 
Minute Maid limited the Angels to just two hits in six innings, struck out seven and walked three. Faced the Angels four times last year, two good starts and two bad starts. Those two bad starts gave up a total of nine earned runs. Downstairs, full count now. Eric Ibar on deck. I think they're going to be going here. Michael, a very good fielding pitcher, got a good move on the Gold Glove last season. The best fielding pitcher in the American League. I think you're going right now. 3 2 count, trust and freeze. Runners don't go, and freeze draws the walk. So they're loaded up for eyeball. Very surprised to not see uh, the runners on the move there. Especially how many ground balls he gets. He have them infielders moving around. But not only that, you talk about a team that is uh, devoid of speed, you know, throughout the 25-man roster. You've got two of the twi quicker guys on the bases. That would be, you would seem to be, the, uh, the most opportune time to do that. But regardless, it works out. It's a walk. Bases loaded. Now Eric Ibart to play. Off speed low. Ibar hitting 223, a couple of doubles, nine runs batted in. A one for three game yesterday. Well, maybe the most important guy to get a lead here would be David Freeze. That way, just in case there is a ground ball in the middle part of the infield that he can take out. The second baseman or shortstop at the base to prevent a double play. Boy, the outfield very, very shallow with Ibar at the plate. We're talking uh, almost little league standards. That's about as shallow as three outfielders would play against any one hitter. Tucker's a rookie out and left. He's playing in his third big league game. And this is a time if you're Ibar, you're to center one spot. Bouncer back up the middle. That'll sneak through for a base hit. Cole will score. Here comes Mike Trout and the Angels have a two to one lead. It's all about connecting that lineup so far. It's been very solid with three hits, including that one right up the middle. A good, quiet approach to the plate for Eric Ibar. 2-0 pitch. Got a fastball right over the middle of the plate and went right back up the middle. And getting it by a very good fielding pitcher and then by Altuve to score two runs. Now 11 RBI on the season for Ibar. First and second, one out, Johnny Giavatella to plate. Two runs allowed by Keichel here in the first inning. Matches a season high allowed in a game. Second start of the year, two against Texas. So important to add on here before he settles in. We've seen that a couple times this year when you have a pitcher on the road, especially a very good one in the first. You have to add on as many as possible. Sixteen pitches thrown, nine out of the strike zone for Keuchel so far in this game. Unusual for sure. The visit of Brent Strom, who's done a nice job with this pitching staff for the Astros. Quick visit. Knowing this pitcher can get that ground ball double play. Ground ball to fly ball ratio, 3.61 for Keuchel this Brent, season. Yeah, I'm sorry, Gooby. Brent, a, uh, a holdover from uh, the coaching staff changes that they had in the offseason. Freeze at second base, high bar at first. Two to one Angels here in the first. Down low. Well, his last eight pitches he has thrown, he's thrown one strike. And that being the pitch to Eric Ibar and hit that back up the middle for a base hit, scoring two. And there's a walk. Second issued by Dallas Keuchel. He does not walk many guys. It's six. It almost looked like Victor, he was guiding that pitch right there. He Follow through. You see it as he's delivering the baseball. He's cutting across his body. You have a pitcher right here that's trying to throw a strike. 3 0. He knows he's taken. He's pulled his arm across his body and nowhere near the strike zone. That's basically what we call aiming a pitch. And he tried that unsuccessfully to throw it in the strike zone.
Carlos Perez, three for ten in the big leagues, facing his former team. One ball, one strike. Second time in the inning in which the Angels have had the bases loaded. Ibar delivered a two RBI single. And that is downstairs. Keigel really struggling to find the strike zone. 21 pitches thrown, 13 out of the zone. Three and one. Boy, is he fighting. Anybody's ever pitched at this level or any level, you know when you're trying to aim a pitch, trying to throw a strike, and just instead of just having that muscle memory, your mechanics being fluid, he is struggling trying to find that arm slot. 3-1 pitch. Perez chops one to short. Gonzalez to Altuve over the first in time, an inning-ending double play. But the Angels do strike for two runs on the I-bar single. One to the second with the Angels leading at 2-1. to one. Is loaded. That's where we stand here at the top of the second inning. Hey, folks, celebrate the uh, grad in your life. Angels grad packs include four tickets to select home games and an Angels graduation tassel for just $100. Purchase grad pack today at angels.com slash grad packs. Grad packs. It's a good deal. Yeah, well, especially since they've graduated, now you can actually probably afford the, uh, <laughs> the grad pack. You're comfortable at that yeah. point. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> Never. Rasmus Carter and Conger here the second to face Matt Shoemaker. Gave up the home run to Altuve in the uh, first inning. Rasmus, the right fielder, hitting 247, five home runs and 10 runs batted in. Over four last night. Shift on. He tried to bunt one down. What was it, a 3 1 count? Or no, he had two one, two, on him, yeah. one 2 count. He tried to push it down the third base line. Skies, this one on the third base side, headed toward the uh, seats and out of play. Down and in. One ball, two strikes. Sixth start of the year for uh, Matt Shoemaker. Total of 23 to third inning so far. Two balls, two strikes now. Easy when he goes with that high fastball, he'll follow it up with his split finger fastball.
It's a little too quick with that pitch, though. Three, two on the way. And he walked him. First walk of the night. But two guys that uh, seldom have any kind of control issues. And uh, Keiko issues two walks in the first. And Matt gives up a leadoff walk here to start the second after getting ahead. Oh, two. two. Yep. His 30 walks in 27 career starts. You see that too often, especially a leadoff walk from Shoemaker. Chris Carter, the first baseman at the plate. One ball, no strikes. Carter hitting 152. Four home runs, 10 runs batted in. Thirty-seven home runs a season ago for Houston, eighty-eight RBIs. That is high and deep to right. Cole Calhoun moving back on it. He'll pull up, and that is gone. Another home run allowed by Matt Shoemaker. Houston back on top, three to two. That's some pretty good power going the other way. That's how strong Chris Carter is. Four seam fastball out over the plate. You can see that approach right there for Carter. He was thinking in terms of trying to drive that ball the other way. So it looks like it's going to be one of those nights. Go back and forth. Here's Hank Conger. Swinging. The breaking ball. And rolls soft to the Giovatel. And there's out number one. The two home runs allowed by Shoemaker in this ball game. 44 hit by Houston now in the season. We always want to put yourself in a position where you're just showing a fastball to Chris Carter off the plate. Get him out with something off speed, whether it's a slider or a curve, avoid fastballs unless you get him thinking in terms you're going to throw a consistent strikes, but you're all speed. Preston Tucker at the plate. And he will take outside. Tucker, the left fielder, got to the big leagues two nights ago. He's gone one for six. His first big league hit, a big one in the ninth inning two nights ago against Houston Street. Shoemaker misses with the breaking ball. Two balls and no strikes. That breaking ball caught the outside corner. It's Rob Drake calling the balls and strikes tonight. Gabe Morales at first, Joe West, the crew chief at second, and Kerwin Damley over at third. Umpiring crew this series. Three and one. Fastball command issue here for Matt Shoemaker. A lot of fastballs up. He was really good. Minus the uh, the solo home runs he gave up against Seattle. This one down towards center field. Hit well, but right to Trout. Two outs. I mean, Shoemaker's not a ground ball pitcher, but he's pretty effective when he's down. With his off speed, showing a fastball down, but living upstairs with his fastball is it's, it's a dangerous pitch for him. Unless you're spotting that exactly where you want to throw, that one that ran out over the plate against Altuve, tried to go upstairs with that ran in the middle of the plate. Same thing there against Carter. Ninth place hitter at shortstop, Marwin Gonzalez up now. VR got the start at short the first two games of the series. Gonzalez will look at a strike. Gonzalez, like VR, switch hitter. 271 with a home run and eight runs batted in. 0 2 count.
3 2 Houston. We're in the second. 0 oh, 2. Swinging a miss. Down goes Gonzalez. Shoemaker settles down, but it gives up a two run shot. The Carter will head to the bottom of the sack with the Angels down by a run. And coming up later in the game, we'll check out the big news from around the majors on the Carl's Jr. Sports Update. Old friend of ours is swinging an extremely hot bat in the AL Central and the NL Central. Leader, as usual, playing well. Featherston, Calgill, and Calhoun. Facing Dallas Keuchel. All one pitch. Featherston getting a start today at uh, third base for David Fries serving as a DH. Behind him, the count here at 0 uh, 2. Featherston, a Houston native at Taylor High School. As he fouls this one back. And went on TCU. Up at Fort Worth. And a lot of fans and family came down to that series in Minute Maid Park. For a lot of watching this game back home tonight. One ball, two strikes. Taylor one for nine this year, has an RBI. First big league hit. It's Oakland up at the O.Co. Coliseum. Rule five selection. And he strikes out swinging to start the second. One down. First strikeout for Keichel. What you hope is, is that. Uh, Perez rolling into that double play ball on a 3 1 count to end the first. Uh, is it the last opportunity the Angels have against Keichel? Well, that's a perfect fastball from Keichel. 92 mile an hour fastball at the knees and away. Two down. Back to the top of the order now, Cole Calhoun had led off the first with a base hit to center. Keiko threw 23 pitches in that first inning, nine strikes. So six pitches so far, five strikes in the center. That's great numbers against lefties this year for Cole. This one pulled toward first, backhanded by Carter. So seven pitch inning for Dallas Keuchel. Two complete. Houston leads it 3 2.
Work broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and on ships at sea. We thank you for your continued service and we welcome you to tonight's broadcast. Houston leads it 3 2. We're in the third, top of the order now for the Strohs. Marisnik, Altuve, and Valbuena. Marisnik flipped a single down the right field line. Was looking for extra bases. Probably would have gotten it, but he stumbled around the bag. And then was thrown out trying to steal by Perez in the first. The one for one game for the former Riverside Poly standout. Here's the one one inside two balls one strike couple of home runs allowed by shoemaker There's been some good. There's been some bad for Matt home runs continue to be something that plague him. He's allowed nine now this year This one's out toward left center field and Calgill, Nice effort not going to get there Maristic with his speed trying to get to second and easily does so with a leadoff double so two hit game for Marisnik. That's his fifth double of the year. Diving effort by Calgill, unable to make the play. Backed up well by Trout, but Marisnik Marisnik this runs too quickly. Picks up his fifth double. Houston did not uh, get a man into scoring position against Weaver yesterday. Hit one here to lead off the third. Now Tuve Homer in the first fourth of the year. Calhoun very shallow in right field. Home run that Altuve hit in that first inning on the fastball that was up. Shoemaker is going to have the various look back to second. Maristic loves to try to steal third. No balls, two strikes. Two of a batting champion a season to go at 341, 225 hits. 349 to start this ball game. Leading the league in hits again. Now with 45 on the season. Oh, two. Tap a foul. Not easy to strike out. He's got great late coverage. It's 12 strikeouts in 127 official at bats this year. One strike up for 13 plate appearances last year. Jake Marisnik at second with a leadoff double. Fourth hit allowed by Shoemaker. One ball, two strikes. Blocked well by Perez behind the plate. Split finger fastball in the dirt. Great technique by Perez. The glove down. Squared the shoulders up. Breaking ball. Punch to second base. Giovatella has it. One down. Maristic advances to third. Hey folks, tomorrow the Angels take on the Astros at 12:35, and more importantly, it's Mother's Day. So if you haven't gotten out and uh, gotten a card or some flowers, bring her to the yard. Uh, I'm because counting you're on a scarf. I'm, I'm counting on the scarf. Yeah, first, <laughs> first 20,000 adults in attendance will receive a Mother's Day scarf, courtesy of Farmer John. Purchase tickets at the Angels Stadium ticket office or online at angels.com. Infield in for the Angels. Valbuena at the plate. Now throw it at third base and uh, 
or is Dick back? Design play. Valbuena 0 for 1 as he skied one out to a Trout in the first inning. Knowing it's going to be difficult against Dallas Keuchel. And he hooks this one foul. One ball, one strike. Nice play. Big crowd here in the night. A lot of Girl Scouts here. Lots. At the parade before the game. One one. Buena takes in two balls, one strike. I wonder why you were asking about thin mints. <laughs> There's something Love going the, on. The cookies. Love them. Gannis on deck. Two one pitch. Next pulled to right field. That'll get down for a base hit. And Houston extends their lead to four to two. Buena picks up his 12th RBI. Mike Woodrow on the phone. Down to the bullpen. And a good rest last night. The bullpen finally got a, a needed rest with a complete game shutout by Weaver last night. Jose Alvarez like is going to be the first man up, the lefty. Gannis a strikeout victim in the first. You're of the belief that perhaps Mike Sosha and Mike Butcher should split up Weaver and Shoemaker. Yeah, uh, we were talking about that in between innings after the first inning. Because what you have with Shoemaker and Weaver, very similar pitchers. You know, they spot their fastball well. Weaver's, you know, he's got a great changeup. Shoemaker has a great split finger fastball. They both get back in the counts with curveballs and sliders. So you have two very similar pitchers going against the same club. Now, if it's split up in series, a little bit better. But when you have back to back nights of seeing very similar pitches, as a hitter, you're more comfortable at the plate. That's why ideally you would put CJ Wilson in between them or Hector Santiago. Whatever way they want to do, you, it's, it's best served having a lefty in between at some point. Weaver and Shoemaker. Hitters love to be able to see the similar type of pitcher back to back nights. Even though we saw that up in San Francisco with the all three in a row sinker ball right. pitchers with Heston and you had Hudson and then Lincecum. They all pitched well, but you have to hit your spots really good that way to be successful. Yeah, the strikes out swinging for the second time tonight. Two outs. Now here's tonight's Coors like cold hard facts starters for the Angels as far as the rank third this season a couple years ago 11th last year the improvement the sixth so far this year it's been solid as far as ERA now they're just looking for those consistent innings now from the starters. Rasmus drives one out to deep right center field. A no doubter, a two run home run. And it is six to two. Houston, third home run allowed by Matt Shoemaker. And Shu not really fooling many of these Astros hitters. The exception being Evan Gaddis. The ball was crushed. Split finger fastball, and when that stays up in the strike zone, it's just above the knees. Usually, when you see that split finger fastball from Shoemaker, it's going to tumble straight down, but that stayed up around the knees, and a no doubter. So, make that back to back starts now for Shoemaker, which he's allowed three home runs, so six home runs in his last two starts. Break it down even further. Six home runs in the last 11 innings. Last game he threw the ball exceptionally well. He only made 
Those three mistakes that entire game against Seattle. Carter touched him for a two-run home run the opposite way in the second inning. He's one for one. Six hits already for Houston. The team that has hit better against right-handed pitching than they have against lefty pitching. Last night, of course, the exception because Weaver was very, very good as far as his command was concerned. Kept guys off balance. 2-2. Two -two. Stairs. Full count. Next pitch will be the 54th for Matt. Carter goes down swinging. But three runs on the board for Houston. Tacked on here in the third. They lead it 6-2. Tonight to get Matt Shoemaker. Rasmus uh, in his sixth of the year, two run shot now with 12 RBIs. Matt now has given up 10 home runs. Remember last year, 27 games, 20 starts. He allowed a total of 14 home runs on the season. So the Angels' office can do here against Dallas Keiko because he settled down in the second inning through a total. Of seven pitches retiring to sign in order. Trout pools and freeze for the Angels here in the third. One strikeout, two walks for Keichel. That kind of infield base hit in the first inning, scored a run. And when you're a sinker ball, ground ball pitcher, you always have that chance to get through an inning. And that 3 1 pitch he threw to Carlos Perez to get his 6 4 3 double play was huge for him. Two balls, two strikes. Kaiko last year made 29 starts for Houston, went 12 and 9 and a 2.93 ERA. Trout, this one out to center, playable for Marisman. One out. Up steps Albert. Kaiko's evolved to be a Perfect uh, front of the rotation guy for Houston, especially when uh, they were struggling prior to last year to pick up wins. And he just kind of went out there, did his job. They weren't sure what he was going to be, kind of a swing guy. Went out there, 
worked quickly through strikes and he's gotten better and better each year. Fields his position exceptionally well. Yeah. Slows down or stops a running game completely. And doesn't give up home runs. So you have to bunch hits together against him. You have your chance, especially back in that first inning, you had a chance to possibly even knock him out of the game, but he made that little sinker, got a ground ball double play. Albert takes a called strike three, just like that. There are two outs. Went away the first two pitches, and then spots a fastball inside. Real good mechanics on that fastball inside for Keuchel. Oh, one count on David Freeze. Drew a walk in the first. Well, anytime you face Dallas Keuchel, especially of the last year plus, you've got to be just as good on the other side because he's not going to give up many runs. Nor hits coming into the 90 allowed 21 hits in 45 innings this year. Opponents hitting 139. Yeah. Lefties hitting 139. Righties hitting 139 against them this season. Coming into this game. That leads the league. 2 1. Three is fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes. And he's got a string of 13 straight quality strikes going back to August, mid August of last year. Very competitive. You can see he was upset with himself walking off the mound in the first inning. He's locked himself in now. Full count now. High bar on deck. Fastball that was up. Pretty good swing at a fastball 3 2 from Freeze. Two chopper toward the hole. Valbuena with a diving stop. Gets up, throws over to first. And freeze gunned down by Luis Valbuena. Who's made a couple of sensational plays at the hot corner in the series. Not only great range, but he has an extremely strong throwing arm. Outstanding by Valbuena.
Or call 1-855-WANT-TWC. And by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Top of the fourth inning, 6-2. Houston leads it. Matt Shoemaker's done here after three innings. After allowing three home runs, six hits, four strikeouts, one walk. Just 54 pitches thrown, but uh, really not uh, fooling many guys. So Mike Sosha decided to go to the bullpen here. And it's Jose Alvarez on in relief. So in and out, who's in, who's out. Alvarez 0-1 with a 4.15 ERA, pitching in his 11th game this year. 13 innings, seven hits, 12 strikeouts, and three walks. Yeah, he's been a starter throughout his career, so he can give some innings out of the bullpen for Mike Sosha. Keep it close here. Hope the offense gets it going against Keuchel. Conger, Tucker, and Gonzalez for Houston. As Hank tops this one foul. There's no balls, two strikes. Conger grounded out in the second. So he's 0 for 1. Hank reaches for the off speed pitch, and there's the first out. Real good changeup from Alvarez. Fastballs 88 to 91 range. Very good changeup and breaking ball. Great location. Barely see the rotation of the seams on that changeup. Very good one. Down and away. Get a swing and miss. Preston Tucker, the left fielder, hit a fly ball to center field his first time up, so it's 0 for 1. Houston, for what it's worth, is it's 217 against left handed pitching this year. Time is called at the last minute. Joe West. As a uh, beach ball is out on the uh, morning track at right field. Joe over at second base tonight. One ball, one strike. Alvarez, remember, prior to last year, came over from the Tigers. Exchange for Andrew Bromine. Had some arm problems last year. It's a whole lot. This one pulled to the right side. Giovatella. Yeah. Two down. Nice play by Johnny. Tyus Jones, member of that national championship, Duke Ball Club, freshman. An outstanding season last year in the ballpark today. I know Mike Trout's a big Duke basketball fan. Have just un under 12 points a game. Point guard has declared eligible for the draft this year. Johnny's a Duke fan because you had committed to Duke. Yeah, that's that's right? the exact reason why. Before signing with Kansas City. <laughs> yes. That's the uh, the legend of Mark Gubas in Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey. Yeah, we just connect connect the dots. <laughs> And he's throwing Gene Banks too back in the day. Philly guy going down there and playing basketball at Duke. The only Banks I know is Bob Eubanks. <laughs> oh, oh. He and Coach K go way back. He's hanging out with him back in 1981. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gonzalez hits one out toward left field. Hit pretty well. Calgo got a good jump, however, and Alvarez comes in. And gets a one, two, three inning. First of the night for the Angels. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth, six to two, Houston.
FIFA Women's World Cup is less than a month away, and some hometown players have been Simpsonized. Fox Sports has joined forces with the Simpsons, who have created a special soccer-themed couch gag with the likes of Alex Morgan from Diamond Bar and Kristen Press from Palos Verdes. The episode airs tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Fox, so be sure to tune in and see the local stars on one of entertainment's most iconic brands. Around for a long, long time, the Simpsons. Real soccer team, very, very good. That's a tough one with Japan last time around. Eric Ibar facing Dallas Keuchel here. Lead things off for the fourth inning. Keuchel's retired the last seven straight. Eric delivered with the bases loaded in the first inning, a two RBI single up the middle. Keichel then walked Giovatello to load the bases again, but then got Perez on a 3 1 count, round into the inning ending double play. It's been uh, another gear for Dallas Keichel. Two strikeouts, two walks. Thought about swinging at, did not go. All of a sudden, a little bit better snap on his breaking ball, better command with his fastball. Eric strikes out, swinging on the off speed pitch, one down. Went after a break of ball down and in, followed up with a very good change up. A little circle change up, running it away. Very similar to the pitch we saw last inning from Alvarez. Jim Attell drew a walk in the first. No official ABs for him. And this is lined toward the alley in left center field. It'll get down for a hit. Marisna cuts it off. And Johnny with a one out single. We'll bring up Perez. Pitch elevated enough to be able to get the good part of the bat on the baseball. Use the middle of the field. Make that string. Keiko was on as far as consecutive batters out. He retired seven, eight in a row. One ball, no strikes. Carlos over one with that double play ball in the first. This is lined down the right field line toward the corner. Diavatella heading toward third base. Rasmus gets to it, gets it back in. Diavatella will score easily. Carlos Perez with his first big league double makes it six to three. Houston. Well, for a young hitter, he does such a nice job as far as. Let the baseball travel. Keeping his hands inside the baseball. He got right over Carter's head. Not an easy thing to do at first base. The ball traveled deep in the zone, and it's a level swing once again for Perez. Big swing over the head of Carter down the line. Well, three RBI in the season for Perez. The entire season, Keuchel has allowed four earned runs. He's allowed three so far in this game. Featherston fouls this one off to the right. And like you said, with a guy like Keuchel, anybody that uh, has ace-type stuff, you've got a bunch hits together. You've got to have an inning like you did in the first and not let him get off the hook because those are going to be few and far between. He pitches a lot of pitches down in the strike zone or below the strike zone, like that slider there. But when he makes a mistake upstairs, like he did to Giovatella, to Perez, that's when you can't miss that pitch and you got to drive it. Still has not allowed a home run this year. One ball, two strikes. Taylor struck out, leading off the second. He's 0 for 1. 
Perez last night robbed of his first double by Valbuena on a nice play at third base. Able to get that one past Carter at first. One, two. Swing and a miss. Conger has to throw down to first base. Strikeout complete, two outs. Calgill saw one pitch against Keichel in the second, bounce went back to the mound. We start tonight in left field. Took an off-speed pitch. First strike. 6-3 Houston here in the fourth. Fared slightly better against left handed pitching just from an average standpoint as a team than they have against right handers, although they picked up a win yesterday against Roberto Hernandez. Now 8 14 against right handed pitchers. As Calgo had a good rip, fouled it straight back. And that pitch up too, he's better opportunity to square up a baseball against Michael when it's elevated. And a 1 2 pitch here, you're going to see either a change up going down the way or a break a ball down and in. He likes also to try to sneak a fastball inside. One, two. Downstairs is that breaking ball. They got Featherston. Two balls, two strikes. Reaching for this one, a chop to the left side. Bob Blaine has it. It's rid of it quickly. Calgill retired for the second time tonight. The Angels do get one of those runs back. We'll head to the fifth. Houston still on top. With an EPA estimate 31 highway miles per gallon. Visit Jeep.com for more information. And by AT&T Uverse. More live TV channels on the go than cable. Top of the fifth inning. Halo's down by the score of 6-3. to three. We welcome you to our broadcast booth tonight. And uh, we apologize for the mess. Just a lot of... A lot of numbers, a lot of quick numbers <laughs> we had to figure out here with uh, Matt Shoemaker lasting just three innings tonight. And unfortunate for him because he did throw the ball well. Gave up the three solo shots late in the game against Seattle. Took the loss, but he threw the ball well that night. 
tonight, a little different story. Command was a little bit of an issue. Yeah, I think a lot of high fastballs. That, that was the issue for him tonight. Last game out against Seattle, he painted the fastball, each part of the, of the, the four quadrants of the strike zone, and this dominated with his fastball. That set up his split finger fastball, which was, which was great, and his slider. But his fastball command was just not there for him. A couple of mistakes upstairs for Shu. One, two, and three here in the fifth inning for Houston. Marisnik, Altuve, and Valbuena. Marisnik, a couple of hits tonight with a single and a double. He's also scored a run. Fouls that one back. Two balls and one strike. Jose Alvarez working his second inning of relief. Had himself a one, two, three, fourth. And Jose has been a multiple inning guy the last two times out, two innings. Last pitch at San Francisco on the third. His longest outing of the year. Three innings. Now is against Oakland here on April the 20th. Two balls, two strikes. Well, I always believe as a middle reliever, your mindset always has to be, I want to go out there two, three, four innings. That's my best opportunity to be able to pick up a W. Put up some zeros and hope the offense responds back and scores some runs for you. That's your best chance to get those W's. Off speed pitch gets Marisnik to ground in a second. Not only that, to lower your ERA, too. You get an opportunity to throw up some zeros. Yep. You try to keep the game in check there and give your offense an opportunity, but also, you know, I got a chance to make myself look good, if exactly. you will. Exactly, exactly. And also, you gain respect because when you're down in the bullpen a lot, the position players don't see a whole lot. So when you're in that dugout, you're in there multiple innings, you're putting up some zeros, you're giving your team a chance to potentially win a game. You should feel good. Mercic might have hurt himself going down the line. Now two, babe. Hooks one foul. Does he ever not hit a ball hard? I, I'm telling you, and I know I said this the other night, as far as Vladdy is concerned, and the plate coverage that Guerrero had, which was just absolutely ridiculous, but... Vladdy had some size to him, had some long arms, had un ungodly plate coverage for a little person. And I don't mean that uh, in a derogatory manner. For a little guy playing this game, he covers every quadrant of the strike zone. Even that last at bat, he had a ground ball to second. That was by design. He had a couple strikes on him. He was just going to make sure he moved Marizdik over to third. Inside. Two balls and a strike. Because then the question becomes when you look at a scouting report and talking about Jose Altuve is, all right, where's his cold zone? Because that cold zone may be technically considered a cold zone, but like Weaver slider last night with two strikes, he just, that cold zone just flips out to the shallow right field for a base hit. I think for a hitter like him, I think the slower you go, the better you are. That means a change up or even a slow curveball in the outer part of the plate. Three balls and one strike. Now Tuve, one for two with a home run and a ground out. This one's fouled off to the right you know, toward the seats. And we talked about Marisnik. We saw him going down the tunnel in, in the dugout after going down the first baseline. He's going by the base and, and not looking comfortable. Left leg. Yeah, it looked like there's some kind of an issue. Not seen him back in the dugout since going down. Get looked at. Runs really well for a big guy. Oh, very well. 3 2. A two, he fouls it off to the right. They're already without Springer. But for four more games, he's on the uh, seven day concussion list. Well, when you have the conversations, like, what do you try to do against Altuve? You know, I, just, I thought maybe a slow changeup, even 3 2, is a good pitch to go down and away with a changeup. People like Manny Ramirez, you, you, the way he had his bat, the way he held his bat. He could not get a good swing against a two-seamer sinker fastball down and in. And he works the walk. It looked like he tried that change up away. And I think Alvarez wanted that pitch. And it looked like it did get the strike zone. And you would think, you know, when you remember Manny Ramirez, he was such a great hitter. But he did have that one zone down and in, which he would hit into the ground for you. But anything away, slider away, he had great coverage. He could hit the ball up the middle the other way. High fastballs, he would hit out of the ballpark to the left. Ah! 
played with George Brett for 10 years in Kansas City. He had such a tough time with a slow curveball. He couldn't stay back because he was all that, you know, Charlie Lau theory to get in that moment. Get, this the weight going forward on a fastball. It didn't matter how hard you threw, but something extremely slow. He could not stay back on. Well, that was the one ball he didn't square up. Charlie, uh, I mean, kind of evolved with Walt Riniak to a certain extent, almost too far with the White Sox, but uh, that kind of that front leg hitting. Yep. With Riniak, remember that, that follow through that. Yeah. A lot of the guys had Ventura. Frank Thomas, to a certain extent, had it. Ozzie Guillen. One dog. Was yeah. it Lance One Johnson? Dog, Lance Johnson. That's why I think a, a slow change up to Altuve because he's he's covering a fastball up. Yeah. We saw that his first at bat. And he's doing a pretty good job as far as sliders and breaking balls away. Harder breaking balls, but the slower get him out in front just enough to get off the end of the bat. One two count on Valbuena. Slightly different as far as Albert Pujols compared to Altuve, but two extremely good hitters. Yeah, not as dramatic as when Mark Trumbull was playing first. Yeah. Altuve standing <laughs> next to him. Down goes Valbuena. Two outs. Second strikeout for Alvarez. Hey folks, the Angels will take on the Rockies on Tuesday and Wednesday. And remember, on Wednesday, fans in attendance will receive the Mike Trout hat, courtesy of State Farm while supplies last. Purchase tickets at the Angel State Ticket Office or online at angels.com. The uh, 2015 edition of the Mike Trout hat. I like this new one. Oh, I know you do. Oh, yeah. Gaddis takes outside. The Astros DH has struck out twice tonight. So he's over two. Might have to bring that on the road back east. <laughs> two oh count. Well, Gaddis' first two at bats saw a total of six pitches to strike out twice. A little more patient here. Three-0 Cal with Rasmus on deck. Altuve still at first base, and it's a four-pitch walk. So it's two walks in the inning. It's two on with two outs here. Rasmus coming up. Rasmus has been on board twice with a walk and a run scored in the second, and a two-run home run in the third. That was a split finger fastball. It didn't dive down in the ground, which normally would see from Shoemaker. He's got a very good split finger fastball, but stayed up, and Rasmus was able to get all that one. Home run for Rasmus, his sixth of the year. Takes outside. 29 pitches thrown by Jose. Handles in the bottom of the fifth inning have the top of their order coming up. Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols. This one's out toward left field. Chasing Calgill back. Still moving back and near the wall. He'll make the catch. Boy, that ball was struck well. That's gone in Houston, too, with the Crawford boxes and left. It's an out here, and it's still 6-3 Houston.
reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Angels. 6-3 Houston. Bottom of the fifth. Cole Calhoun to lead things off. He'll be followed by Mike Trout and then Albert Pujols. See if that good defensive play by Calgill can spark the offense now. Halos with two runs in the first, one in the fourth. Cole one for two. Angels have managed five hits against Dallas Keuchel. Three in the first inning, two in the fourth inning. And it's four strikeouts and two walks. A lot of room on that left side of the infield for Cole Calhoun. Especially, especially on that breaker ball to stay back on it, punch it through that hole. Cole strikes out. Foul tips that one into the mitt. He thought that ball hit the ground, but uh, it's a strikeout for the first out. Take a look at our T-Mobile game changer. Two of the strongest hitters in baseball as far as home runs since July 1st of last year. Chris Carter with his home run tonight ties Nelson Cruz for that period of time. And third in the majors, Mike Trout with 26 since July 1st of last year. Travel looking to strike. Jake Marisnik, by the way, whom we saw go down the tunnel, is uh, still in the game. He's out in center. So apparently uh, nothing serious. One ball, one strike. There's Jake. Nice. Although we'll see if there's a, a ball to be uh, that he has to go into a full sprint, see if there's anything bothering him. Hey, what a trout has won the left center field. He's going to have to go a long way. Play him hit the other way. Trout one for two today with an infield base hit and a fly ball to shallow center. Off speed, hammered out towards center field. Marisnik drifting back near the wall. That is good. A big fly for Mike Trout, his ninth of the season. And the Halos now trail it by two. Boy, that's the first home run that Dallas Keuchel has allowed this entire season. And that one went even further than the other night here at dead center field. Yeah, and you can see that reaction by Trout. That ball is absolutely tattooed to center field. Out over the plate. Not a bad pitch, but a bad pitch to Mike Trout when it's down around the knees. Wow, did that go a long way? It certainly did. Marisnik didn't even have to sprint. He gave it a courtesy look. I, I commend him for that. Ninth of the year, now with 19 runs batted in. Albert inside out. This one almost takes out Alfredo. <sighs> Sound and distance. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty good. Albert, this one out to shallow right field. Rasmus coming in. He'll make the catch. Two down. Pujols 0 for 3 tonight. Got herself a game now with that swing from Trout. That's four earned runs Keiko has allowed in this game. Matching what he's given up the entire season. Yep. That'll snap that string of uh, consecutive quality starts for him. Now Frey's at the plate. 0 for 1. The walk and a ground out. Now Buena making a fantastic diving stop on a grounder hit by Freeze. That ended the third inning. 6 4 Houston here the fifth. He's a first home run off of Keiko in his career. That's after 25 at bats. It's significant with the fact is that for Trout, he's had 24 at bats against a pitcher. It's the first time he's had zero home runs against a pitcher when he had that many at bats.
Keiko gave up 11 home runs last year. That's one of those ones, though. You don't li like to give up home runs, but when you do, <laughs> you like to give up the distance. Freeze takes a fastball right down the pipe as he goes down looking. The fifth is in the books, but Trout delivers his ninth of the season, 19th RBI. We're through five. 6 4 Houston. Back after his third inning of work. A lot of kids in attendance here tonight for the uh, Girl Scout Parade. And also, it is a Saturday night spectacular. It is spectacular. It is Fireworks. Spectacular. John hitting his ninth of the season to draw the Angels within two. And now it's up to Alvarez to keep it as such. His third inning of work, as I mentioned, and Carter fouls off the first pitch. Carter, Conger, and Tucker, six, seven, and eight for Houston here in the sixth. Chris Carter at his fifth of the season in the second inning. A two run shot now with 12 RBIs. Struck out in the third. The last batter that Matt Shoemaker faced tonight. Shoe lasting just three innings. No balls, two strikes. Angels do get some action going in their uh, bullpens. Alvarez is now at 32 pitches. Much of the season long for him is uh, three innings. 0 2 to Carter. Pull foul. Careful down and in. Yeah, danger spot. Bounce something down and away. Don't even try a high fastball against him. Most pitches he's thrown this year, 38. That was a two and a third when he found. That's a called strike three on the inside part of the play. Maybe Carter was thinking going down and away. Doesn't like the call. One down. And he went a fastball in. And he got the call there just barely, if any, touching that inside corner corner in our Fox tracks. Yeah. Carter has a little bit of a beef. Cogger 0 for 2 with a ground out and a punch out. Hey, going over to Houston in the offseason for Carlos Perez, the catcher, Nick Tropiano. Right handed pitcher who's currently at Triple A Salt Lake. Threw very well in his first start up here. One ball, one strike. And this is in no way any type of knock on Hank. But from the Angels' perspective, it's a pretty good trade. <laughs> no question. I say that just from the standpoint of you get a, a very serviceable three, four guy in your rotation in Tropiano, the potential of that. Plus a 24 year old kid catcher who so far both from what we've seen very good defensive minded catcher and has swung the bat well through the first couple of games in the big leagues both young Yeah, I, I think it's Certainly has worked out well for yeah. the Angels. You have a guy that has a chance to be part of the rotation at some point 
And what we've seen with the throwing arm from Carlos Perez and his swing. Very solid swing. 2 2 pitch. Hank pulls a foul. The other thing, too, is that at times organizations just have to make decisions. Is he going to be a guy that's going to contribute for us at the major league level? Yes, then you keep him around, you give him the opportunities until he does so, or he flames out, whatever the case may be. If you've already made the decision that he's not, he doesn't fit in those plans, then then definitely move him. Give him a chance to play somewhere else. Right, because obviously there may be another team that values him, as the Astros obviously did. They love his pitch framing ability. They love his pitch framing ability. Three, two, and he walked him. A one out walk puts a man on here. It's a third walk issued by Alvarez. And it'll bring up Preston Tucker. Then he Pastano getting ready for the Angels. More than likely last batter here for Alvarez. Try to get a tough lefty out of young left handed batter in Tucker. Tucker, the left fielder, 0 for 2 with a fly ball to center and a ground ball to second. Swinging first pitch, skies went down the line. Playable for Colin Calgill. Two outs. So two outs and Kiger over at first base. Do you think Hank's asking Albert, hey man, why aren't you guys holding me on? <laughs> but you know by speed? He will hold him on now with a right-handed batter up. Hank is a lot of fun to be around. He is hilarious. Marvin Gonzalez 0 for 2 with a strike on the fly ball to left. Astros lead at 6 4 here in the sixth inning. Houston with a run in the first, two in the second, three in the third. One ball, one strike. Tomorrow we wrap up this four game set. 1235 start on Mother's Day. Garrett Richards on the mound for the Angels. And Scott Feldman, right handed, going for Houston. One and two. Now it's out of the plate. Could change up the pitch before then, a slider down and in. Both sides of the plate. Fouls this one off to the right. Houston with six runs on six hits, three of which were home runs. Two men left on base. The Angels four runs, six hits. Having stranded three base runners. And two they with a solo shot for Carter and Rasmus with two run home runs. Trout a solo shot for the Angels. But back inside now and this is well in off the plate two and two Pistano's ready to go on the pen With the right hand hitting Jake Marisnik on deck that's the leadoff man Well, now you would think you have them set up. Now you've thrown two fastballs in a row, followed by a slider down and in that part of the plate. Change up away.
Marlon Gonzalez always reminds me of Carlos Guillen. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. And not when he's pimping home runs no, up here. We have good at six. We'll head to the bottom of six. Six four Houston. They've won four in a row. Torrey Hunter has been red hot. Three for five, going four for four last night. Now in 295 with 19 RBI. And Cardinals rule. Best record in baseball, even without their ace this year. And a win right out for the season. They continue to win, although they did end up losing late against Pittsburgh tonight. Eric Guy, Bar, Johnny Giavatella, and Carlos Perez for the Angels here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Minnesota's five games over 500 yeah. right now. And uh, the Cardinals, too. Two balls, no strikes. They've been uh, without Matt Carpenter, who was this fatigue. What, three games now. And yeah. They sent him back home to St. Louis. Dehydration, extreme fatigue. They don't miss a beat no matter what. It yeah. seems to be that team. Ibar one for two, a two RBI single and a strikeout. And he will look to strike three and one now. He's the leadoff hitter right here. Now you just have to make sure something's in the strikes, and otherwise he's going to give you the same pitch three one and three two. Make sure it's in the zone. Don't chase. Eric pulls one over to third. Val Buena to the back end. One down. I'll tell you what, you got to stay away from well winning third base. He, gets, he catches everything. Certainly has against the Angels, that's for sure. In the backhand, he has an extremely strong throwing arm. One out, nobody on for Johnny Giavatella. Been on board twice with a walk and a single. Pitch is now thrown by Keichel. Back to back hitters, which he's fallen behind on. He's walked two, both of those walks back in the first inning. Six punch outs for him. Now the two wide downstairs. Three balls and a strike. Carlos Perez on deck. 
And Rizzo mentioned the pitch count as far as the uh, the Astros bullpen is concerned. As good as they have been this year, they are without Luke Gregerson for the rest of the series. He pitched in the opening game. He's on the family emergency medical list. And that is a strike. Full count. That's a minimum of three days, a maximum of seven. So they would have to get to a point where if they're going to close near that situation, Qualls or Neshek, I would imagine. And he's two choices. He's been unbelievably hard for the Angels to hit against Gregerson his entire career. 3 2. Johnny bounces this one back towards second. Altuve has it. Two outs. Follow the Angels all season long with MLB.com at bat. Number one app for live baseball at bat. Up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins. Replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet today. So, four in a row retired by Keichel since the Trout home run. There's Carlos Perez. Doubled his last time up. Looks at a strike. Yeah, that combination with Gregerson was Oakland. Otero and Gregerson. Just file it away. Perez, another hit. Base it up the middle, a multi hit game for the youngster. Yeah, that baseball had a little spin on it, got away from Gonzalez at shortstop. Almost looked like he uh, didn't get a good read off the bat on that yeah, one. Yeah, I thought he thought it was maybe going to be hooking back towards him. It's a cut fastball. Almost just almost on the handle of the bat. And you can see him, he's reading it there, thinking it's going right at him, and then it spins away from him. Because of where he hit that baseball on the bat. Taylor Featherston is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. And he lines one out toward right field. Rass was playing very shallow to make the catch. And the Angels are done here in the sixth. Let's head to the seventh. 6 4 Houston. Log on to MercuryInsurance.com to get a fast free quote and see how much you could save. And by Hyundai. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Top of the seventh inning. 6 4 Houston. And the Angels have gone to their bullpen once again. So Jose Alvarez provided uh, three scoreless innings of relief. It's Vinny Pistano on in relief here of uh, the left hander. Then he's scheduled to face the top of the order, Marisnik, Altuve, and Valbuena. Pistano pitching in his 11th game, 1 0 record, a 4.91 ERA. Seven and a third innings, eight hits, six strikeouts, four walks, and the command has been uh, somewhat spotty for him over the last couple of times out. They're not getting that right arm angle since he hit the spot, especially downstairs, he can elevate some of his fastball. Same thing with his slider. Back to back outings, which uh, Pistano allowed runs. 
Last time out was against San Francisco on May the second. We could go tonight. Jake Marisnik two for three, a single, a double, and a ground out. Falls behind it, one ball, no strikes. Tardy on that pitch. It's outfield straight around with Marisna get to play. Mentioned earlier in the game, his first start in that leadoff spot this year. AJ Hinch saying that he just wanted to keep Marisna and Altuve together. Normally it's a 9 1 situation, but just trying something different. Slider way outside. Two balls, two strikes. That's worked tonight for Houston. I mean, you look at the uh, three guys who combined, or two guys who combined for three hits. A couple runs scored. Fastball down goes Marisnik one away. That was by design to go upstairs, drop his elbow a little bit more so to elevate the fastball. All the Ducks, they're up three to one. Clippers with a big win last night. Yep. And if you're a Clipper fan, Memphis with a big win tonight over Golden State. They're <laughs> real happy about that one. It's a series now, what, two games to one? Memphis leading that series. Tuve fouls the first back. He's able to home run. Ground out and a walk. Six hits for the Astros. All off of Matt Shoemaker. Gave up six runs in his three innings. Oh, and two. See, that was a little slower breaking ball. Had a tough time staying back on that one. A little hard slider. Still hits that ball well to right field. Slider looked like it went around. He did. Down goes Altuve. Back-to-back -back punch outs for Pistano. Two outs. Got to stay focused here. You have a very aggressive hitter coming up now in Valbuena. Has seven home runs. Played some outstanding third base in the series. Two oh pitch. Caught the outside corner two and one. Well, close enough. Close enough to the outside corner. In the vicinity. <laughs> I don't think this is in the vicinity. Two and one pitch. Going up pulls one towards second. Giavatella has it. Pistano with a one, two, three, seventh. It is seventh and eighth stretch time here at the big A. Nine, one, and two coming up for the Halos. Down by two.
Tony Trout to face Dallas Keuchel. Hyundai key to this game. Hold on, Lucy. Those relaxed hands at the plate. Some good swings against Keuchel. Four earned runs allowed by Keuchel in this game matches what he's allowed the entire season. Seven hits allowed. The uh, a season high for Keuchel. As Calgill takes a strike. You went 38 special today. I, mean, I missed yeah, it. Yeah. I know you're a big fan. Oh, absolutely. Calgill 0 for 2. Bouncer back to the mound and a ground ball third. There's action in the uh, Astros bullpen as well as the Angels pen. Get you that info here in just a second. 1 1. Bounce you back to the mound. One out. Second time in this game that Calgill has rounded right back to Keuchel. All speed pitch away. He fields his position so well because he lands in great fielding position as a pitcher. Difficult to bunt against him. Very mobile. He was a quarterback back in high school. Very athletic. University of Arkansas product. Seventh round pick by Houston. 09. Cole one for three, single back in the first. Pat Nishek getting ready for Houston now. Mike Morin for the Angels. Here's Nishek. You know, the first pitch of the game that Cole saw against Keiko, he got a fastball up and hit the left center field. Since that point, he's been getting a lot of breaking balls down and away. This one down the line foul. Jammed him. One two count now. Halo said seven men of the play in the first inning against Keichel. Manages two runs through a big double play to finish off that inning. Two and two. Trout on deck, then Pujols if we get that far. Now the two two. Cole lays off. Full count. It's good take. Very similar to the pitch you got him out last time with in the swing and miss. He's trying to get on base for Trout. He can represent the tying run. Tackle at 98 pitches, but uh, the season high is 115. They don't worry too much about his pitch count. 3 2 now. Strikes out. Swing on an off speed pitch. Two outs. Now it's time for Tools of the Train, brought to you by Brad Trucks. Mike Trout, last at bat against Dallas Keuchel. Fastball down, knee high. Crushed that ball some serious distance once again to center field. He's been crushing the ball this entire homestand to center field for Mike Trout. Three times left the building in that part of the field. Yeah, last four games. We're looking to strike. Two hit game for Trout, two for three with a single and home run. 100 pitches. You see that 23 he had back in the first inning was really on the ropes. He got that big double play ball against Carlos Perez on a 3 1 count. One one pitch. And that is hammered down the line, a hooking foul. Wow. I'm sure you didn't expect the baseball down there when you were sitting. Right size, wrong shape. Well, he got his hands inside the baseball well. This but could not keep it fair. Jab him, and it's a single to right. 
inside out approach. They tried to go back inside with that fastball, and will bring up the tying run in Albert. And Hank Conger elevated that glove. He wanted a high fastball. He got it because he remembers that Trout last year had a tough time laying off that high fastball. A.J. Hinch going to the uh, mound. Meshek's ready to go. For Trout, it's his second three-hit game of the season. The other was at Texas on April the 15th. And they are going to go to uh, Pat Meshek here. So, which is interesting considering Dallas Keuchel had really handled Albert Pujols rather easily through three at-bats. Pitching change here the seventh, 6-4 Houston. the tying run as he steps to the plate to face the right-hander Pat Neshek 3-0 on the season a 409 ERA in 13 games so far 11 innings nine hits 12 strikeouts and no walks the interesting thing about this is I mentioned that uh, even though Albert had good numbers against Keiko prior to tonight Keiko would handle them fairly well Pujols three for nine in his career against Neshek including two home runs that third hit remember was two nights ago that was the one that was drilled and hit Chris Ionetta. Albert got credited for a single in that one, but that ended the rally. Trout over at first base. Albert takes outside, and it's one ball, no strikes. I just feel this is a better matchup for Pujols. Yeah. The, tonight, especially, the way Keiko pitched Albert, absolutely, I agree with you. 103 pitches for the left-handed. Now you just need Albert to, uh, to come through. He's 0 for 3 tonight. In the midst of an 11-game hitting streak. Outside, two balls and no strikes. Well, now he's putting himself, Nishak has right in that position where if he grooves a fastball, Pools can crush it and tie it up. They're playing three infielders on the left side, so the right side of the infield wide open. With Carter holding Trout on at first. Off speed in there, two and one. You know, Pools with five home runs this year, four of them against right handed pitching. Five hundred and twenty five career home runs for Albert. Good lead for Trout. Two one pitch. Albert hits one out toward right field. Rasmus moving there. And we'll put it away. Angels are done here in the seventh. We head to the eighth. Halo still down by two.
Well, if this past week is any indication, something exciting is surely going to happen the rest of the way. Join us after the game for Angels Live. Jose Moda will join me. Alex Curry has plenty of reaction from the Angels Clubhouse. We'll also be talking about Garrett Richards' start tomorrow. We'll talk about him in our pregame show at noon tomorrow as well. Uh, I talked to Garrett after his last start versus Seattle. Pitched great. Had a no decision in seven innings. Did allow this one earned run. He told me that the Garrett Richards of a few years ago would have melted down after allowing one earned run. The wheels would have come off, but he is more mature now. And that, to me, shows me something, Victor and Mark, that he has the understanding of himself now as a pitcher. Allows one earned run, and he can, he can gear down and get the job done. He's really maturing into an ace. Well, there's no doubt about it. He certainly has the stuff to be the ace of the staff. And then uh, for him, really, it hasn't been about velocity. It's just uh, been able to command that fastball a little bit better than uh, as he did last year. It's been an issue for him here in a couple of starts. His mechanics are so much better now at this point for Garrett Richards. Mike Moore now on in relief, pitching in his 15th game. Gatta swinging at the first pitch. Eric Kaibar has it. With one pitch, one out to start the eighth inning. Warren taking over for Vinny Pistano, who had a 1 2 3 seventh, including a couple of punch outs. And up steps Colby Rasmus. Warren threw 11 pitches on Monday. 15th game for him. 1 0 record of 4 9 1 ERA. Seven hits and 11 innings of work so far. And they're looking over at Featherston. They're going to bring him in. He's playing pretty deep. Rasmus tried to punch one down there yesterday as far as a bunt. Oh, what count? Rasmus, one for two. Two run home run in the third inning. It's also walked and scored. Hit a fly ball to left. Neshek will stay in the game in the eighth inning, it appears. Freeze Ibar and Giovatella do up. What you hope you could do is more and paints the outside corner for strike two. Extend that eighth a little bit. Get some some guys on board at the very least to try to spin that lineup around in the ninth. If you get into that situation in the ninth, you, know, you want somehow, some way to get Trout another at bat. Off speed takes it low. One and two. Forty thousand two ten of the house tonight. Saturday night fireworks spectacular. Off speed down the line foul out in front. And that changeup is a little bit too high. Now you have a chance to run that changeup down and away. The thought process a lot for pitchers is try to sneak a fastball in. And that's still that's your bread and butter changeup. Two and two. But now you got to mix it up a little bit, right? You've seen three yeah. in a row. Yeah. Now you can try to paint a fastball away. And still be leery about throwing a fastball inside because if you miss out over the plate in, that's where Rasmus has real good power. We saw that on display in the third inning. Sixth home run of the season. The 2-2. Two -two. Fastball. Got him looking. Exactly two down. where you wanted to throw the fastball. Paint the outside corner. 93. Nice job of framing that pitch and Bob Drake has called a lot of those pitches on that outside part of the play or just off the outside corner. Pre infielders now on the left side as Carter looks at a breaking ball first strike. One for three game for him. Two run home run. Second inning. Slider. One ball, two strikes. 
three games left on this homestand tomorrow against the Strohs at 12:35. An off day on Monday, and then two night games against the Colorado Rockies Tuesday and Wednesday. Carter chops this one toward third. Featherston has to come in. Good throwing arm throws that Carter one two three inning for Mike Moore. Right to the bottom of the eighth. Halo still down by two. to four. Pat Nishik is indeed back out of the mound. Freeze. I bar Giovatella for the Halos here in the eighth. Nishik got Pujols at the fly ball to right field to end the seventh. With Trout standing at first base. And not your typical delivery. Not overpowering Nishak. He's got a good slider and curveball too. But fastballs 86 to 90. It's all about deception. As a hitter, you're just trying to track his hand and see the baseball out of his hand, not all the other stuff that's going on as far as all the movement in his body. Chopping left side, Valbuena cuts in front of Marvin Gonzalez. One out. Here's your DraftKings players to watch update. When David Freeze, who had real good numbers against Dallas Keuchel, coming into the game to 0 for 3 with a walk. Albert. Of the game history coming in 0 for 4. That's the bum gardener who had been dealing last three games, had 10 punch outs in five innings. Also punched out Stanton three times, and Billy Butler with an RBI single, just one for three for Oakland tonight as they're losing to Seattle. That game's at the bottom of the sixth inning. Mariners up 5 to 1. Ibar batting to the left side for the first time tonight. One for three. A two RBI single in the first. Dallas Keuchel will start it for Houston. Six and two thirds. Four runs. Eight hits. A clear home run to Trout. Seven strikeouts and two walks. Tied him up with that fastball, one and two. <laughs> 
two outs. Oh, chasing the pitch nowhere near the zone. And it'll bring up Giovatello now. Nishek's retired all three. And this fastball ran way off the outside corner. That late movement, but well out off the corner. Swing and miss for Guy Bar. Jim Attella one for two game with a walk and a single. Looks at a strike. All six runs for Houston scored the first three innings. Zero since then. As a matter of fact, they've not had a hit over the last five innings. Well, Alvarez, Pistano, and Morin doing a nice job of keeping it in check. How important was that complete game shutout for Weaver last night to allow that extra rest for a bullpen that's been used quite a bit? Be able to give the team a chance to stay in this game and an opportunity late to potentially win it. Pull foul, one and two. Garrett Sarcina back. Third base coach's box. Dino Evil back in his little bench spot. Dino Desar missing a. Last couple of games tending to a funeral back east. A little shooter McGavin or what? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he likes that move. Two balls, two strikes. He should get a very good season with the St. Louis Cardinals last year. Signing in the offseason with Houston. Originally a Minnesota twin. 2-2 Two -two now. Givatella lifts one out to left. Playable for Tucker. And Angels here in Go down quietly. Well, head of the night, 6-4 Houston. You can see Fox Sports Live tonight at 11 p.m. on Fox Sports 1 or see it simulcast right here. Fox Sports West. Top of the ninth inning. 6-4. Houston Astros leading the Angels in game three of this four-game set. And it's a new angel Ryan Matthews on to pitch in the ninth inning. Matthews called up before the game last night. Effort Navarro was sent down. The 31-year-old has been around in the big leagues. He's a Sacramento, California native. It's uh, from 11 through 14 with the Washington Nationals. Last year, just in seven games at the major league level, signed with the Angels in the offseason. Now making his Angels debut tonight. Yeah, fastballs 90 95, slider, split finger fastball. Matthews originally 19th round pick in 03 by the Colorado Rockies, Sacramento City College. 
31 years of age. There's the graphic for the pen tonight. Born had himself a 1 2 3 eighth inning, a strikeout for him. It's the bottom third of the order for Houston Conger, Tucker, and Gonzalez. Angels currently with a 13 man pen, 12 position players. Hanko for two with a ground out, a strikeout, and a walk. Solid effort, though. We talked about that right away. When Alvarez came in the game, you put up some zeros, give your offense a chance, all of a sudden back in the game. Keep another zero here, or just a base hit and a home run, and you're tied up. And Mike Sosha was looking for out of his bullpen, but got the rest he needed with Weaver's shutout last night. Matthews had been at Triple A Salt Lake prior to the call up. Change up missing away. 11 games with the B's. 0 and 2. 2.84 ERA with one save. 12 strikeouts at 12 and two third innings and just two walks. A lot of appearances in spring training for the Angels, too. Downstairs. 2 and 2 now. It's 66 games for the Nats in 2012. 5 and 3 and a 285 that season. 2 2, got him looking. Down goes Hank. One away, breaking ball. And a backdoor slider. Good location of this pitch. Framed well by Perez. That's 12 strikeouts for Angels pitchers tonight. Unfortunately, they've allowed to three home runs, they being. Really, Matt Shoemaker, the second straight start, allowing three home runs. It's allowed 10 on the year. An alarming rate, no question about it. Tucker looks at a strike. But all you can hope for, as you pointed out, is the fact that uh, he gets taken out at the beginning of the fourth inning and that you start to chip away and hope you put yourself in a position to kind of get your starter off the hook. Angels chipped away with solo runs in the fourth and fifth innings, but haven't done much since then. Just two base runners. And that goal in that bottom of the ninth is somehow get Trout to the plate. He's due up fifth downstairs. Two and one. Perez, Featherston, Calgill are the scheduled three batters. I would imagine that you can see Matt Joyce. Got CJ Crone also CJ available. Crone, yeah. For the uh, two spots there at the bottom. Walls with an ERA, career ERA over eight against the Angels, so he hasn't necessarily hit his spots. So you just need a, a base runner or two. He's walks Preston Tucker. The last thing you want to do is gift base runners, especially to a guy that's got two days in the big leagues. Going to be a potential pinch runner. First base runner since the walk to Conger in the sixth. Marwin Gonzalez, a shortstop, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a fly ball left. And just going back to Qualls, he pitched in back to back games against the Angels at Minute Bay Park. The first game went really well for him as Gonzalez fouls this one off. Pardon me, the uh, first game didn't go so well for him. Gave him three runs and one hit, two hits allowed, and the next one did throw the ball well. Had himself a three strikeout inning. But as you mentioned throughout his career, the Angels have fared well against him. And a flare foul. And it's no balls and two strikes. He's got 12 and two thirds innings pitched, 12 earned runs. Does have three saves though.
Tucker with a good lead over at first base. Top of the order, Jake Marisnik on deck. Two balls, two strikes. Two two, swinging a move. Down goes Gonzalez to outs. Oh, pretty good movement on his fastball for Matthews. Gonzalez put his hands low in his approach and then tried to get the hands up on a high fastball. Could not make contact. Good running action. Swing and miss. Perfect spot. And the punch out for an angel bullpen arm. So Marisnik now at the plate. Two for four tonight. Single and a double, a ground down, and a strikeout. Bouncer to third. Featherston has it. He'll go the short way. And they force out Tucker. So we'll head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Chad Qualls in to face the bottom third of the order. The Angels down two. Stand back to back nights against the Seattle Mariners. They will need some here tonight. Down six to four. And uh, Carlos Perez is set to lead things off for the Angels, facing the right hander Chad Qualls. Veteran's been around a while, pitching in his 13th game this year. 0 2 record, a 348 ERA. He has two saves under his belt, 14 strikeouts, and two walks in 10 and a third innings. Yeah, fastball 88 to 93. Slider change up occasional split finger fastball also a lot of sliders 42% of his pitches this season so far have been sliders Matt Joyce has come out to the on deck circle And you've got the uh, number nine spot in Colin Calga before getting to the top of the order if we get there Carlos Perez with a couple of hits tonight single a double an RBI and a double play ball so he's two for three Qualls delivers low. Mention again that Luke Gregerson, the closer for Houston, he had the seven saves recorded this year, unavailable family emergency list 
for Gregerson. He'll miss the rest of the series. 1 0. That's on the corner. One ball, one strike. Perez pulls one foul. Fastball at 93. Again, the outfield for Houston all the way around. Very shallow. Amazing how shallow. A lot of times, this point of the game, the manager put that no doubles defense. One, two. Slider. Top foul. To get a base runner, there's no question you'll see that no doubles defense. They want to take away a little flare hit. They're trying to avoid the uh, tying run coming to the plate. One, two, jam them again. We're talking about trying to get Trout to the plate here. He did hit a home run against Qualls in Houston earlier this year. And you mentioned that game in which he gave up those runs. Already three hits in the game for Trout, including a home run. Conger set up outside. One two pitch. It's a slider. Two or two. What if he comes back inside with a fastball again? Now Buena playing deep at third, especially with two strikes now. Conger again back outside. 2-2. Two -two. Fastball got him looking. Down goes Perez. 1-0 out. -on Four of the seven pitches on the outside part of Plato off the corner. This time he goes high with a fastball. Just enough pitches inside to open up that outer park at the top part of the strike zone called. So Matt Joyce pitch inning here for Taylor Featherston who finished up going over three. Joyce a 148 average, a home run, and seven RBIs. Pulls this one to the right side. Altuve diving into the outfield. Grass throws out. Joyce two outs. Well, he's done it with the bat and he's done it with the glove in this series so far. This baseball is in the outfield. Grass on the dive from Altuve. And another solid play defensively by the second baseman. Well, the Halo's down to the last out here. And it's Colin Cowgill. Coming up to try to uh, keep the inning alive and give Calhoun an opportunity. <laughs> Collins tonight 0 for 3. We'll start out in left field. Was kind of looking at that landing area after he delivered that pitch. Wrap up this four game set tomorrow on Mother's Day. 12 35 start. Garrett Richards against Scott Feldman. Six in a row retired by Astros pitching since the Trout base hit in the seventh. One and two. Trying to pull that pitch. He tried to pull a couple of off-speed pitches against Keiko. Ground ball back up to the middle. So Keiko will be able to feel to throw him out at first. I think in terms of going the other way on that fastball for Calgill. Broken bad roller. Toward third. Valbuena. Tough play. Not a time. An infield base hit. So Cole will get an opportunity. 
so used to Valbuena making every play. He almost made that play also in that slow roller. Playing back. Calgill gets jammed. It's a nice play by Valbuena, but you're not going to throw out Calgill going down the line. You know, with some of the pitches that he threw Perez, that's kind of what I was thinking that Perez might eventually do if he was going to bust him back inside. Yep. But Calgill does it with two outs. And now Cole will step up representing the tying run. Cole one for four with a single back in the first inning. has struck out the last two times. Those were against Keuchel. Trout on deck. Slider down and in. They're calling Calgill. You are dropping anchor at first yeah. base. No, you're not moving. Your run means absolutely nothing at this point. Carter playing behind him. Well, he takes off. And that is shot foul at the third base line. You better make sure you're safe. No doubt about it. By a lot. Pretty good size lead with Carter playing off the base. Yeah, he was going to be safe. Three infielders on the right side. Valbuena playing in over at third. Again, Calgill takes off, and again, Calhoun fouls it off. This one into the upper tank. The uh, third base side. They're down to their last strike yet again. Well, Preston Tucker about as shallow as you could play as a left fielder. Chaining cold toward the foul line. The other two outfielders back more normal depth. And the dirt Calgill will advance a second. Still a lot of room in that shortstop side for Calhoun. Just trying to get on base, do something. Or get Trout up to the plate. 2-2 Two -two on the way. Upstairs, full count. Setting up a slider, potentially. He's got He's got to be looking over on the on-deck circle with Trout thinking, i got to throw a fastball. Cannot afford to throw this slider in the dirt and walk for Calhoun to allow Trout to come to the plate. If you're Cole, you're sitting fastball. If he makes a perfect pitch with a slider, there's nothing you can do about it. Conger set up in shot. Here's a 3 2. He's fouled to the plate. Went with a fastball and right off the body. That's a quick conversation for Conger. Maybe he will. Think in terms break a ball now, but this one great right off the shin area. Trying to walk it off. Balls is ready. Conger sets up outside. 3 2. And that's lined to left field. That's a base hit. Tucker chasing it down into the corner. Calgill will score. Calhoun to second. And the Angels are down one with Mike Trout representing the winning run coming up. Now will A.J. Hinch pitch the Trout here now with an open base? Do you have a man behind Mike Trout that's crushed the Astros his entire career? That's a great piece of hitting by Cole Calhoun. Back in the fifth inning, Mike Trout got a pitch out over the plate, and he tattooed it. The center field, big boy distance. And they're going to talk this over here. Very seldom do you put that winning run on base, especially with the speed of Trout, where an extra base hit, and you lose it. The question is, pick your poison. Do you do that and take your chances with Pujols? 
Or do you face Trout here with first base open? So you want to be a manager, huh? That's a, that's a tough decision. Trout with three hits tonight, two singles and a home run. And they're going to intentionally walk yeah, him. That's what I thought they would do. Gutsy move. And you consider who's on deck and what he has done against the Astros throughout his entire career. And while you would like a big hit to win it, all you need at this point is just a little flair to try to tie this one up. Gapper wins it with the speed no on the bases question here. About it. And as shallow as these outfielders have played all night, so Trout will take his place over at first. Tying run at second, winning run at first. Now for Pujols coming up now. They're going to pitch the middle. Altuve has been playing Albert up the middle and on occasion on the shortstop side of second base. And we'll see how they defend here. Outfield straight around at normal depth. Good numbers in his career against Chad Paws. Albert came in with an 11-game hitting streak. He's hitless tonight, 0 for 4. Slide of the dirt. Altuve is on the second base side of the bag, trying to keep Cole as close as possible to the bag. Since he is that tying run. But now with the outfitters as deep as they are, anything in the outfield, that's that's gonna score. Cole's gonna score anyhow. 6-5 Houston here tonight. The 1-0. Ground ball toward the middle. Gonzalez to his left has it. Feeds Altuve and the Angels. Drop game three by the final of six to five. Well, you had your chance. That's what you wanted. Albert Pool, especially with those great numbers against Jack Qualls. But Qualls gets Pools to ground out the short. Houston wins game three here. They've won two out of three against the Angels. Well, you got the guys at the plate that you wanted to, but it did not happen. Astros win it 6 5. Stick around. Angels Live is coming up next.